So I, I was just saying that Ron introduced me to PRT probably nine years ago. And um, I, I was at the time working at NASA and we were, I was developing biofuels and we, we developed this biofuel technology and we realized it wasn't economically viable. So I, I invited a bunch of companies and academics to come to NASA and present future transportation ideas. And um, Skytrain was one of the companies that came to NASA and presented their technology and I was so excited about it, I, I left NASA and joined the company. And that was probably nine years ago. Um, and it's, you know, I'm happy to announce this year we, we got funding from Eric Schmidt, the ch chairman of Google, from his personal fund, uh, Series A round. So Skytrain is finally funded um, after nine years. So it's been a long journey and I'm, I'm really happy to announce that. Um, so I wanted to talk today more uh, about what makes a PR system viable. Um, cars provide 95% of our transportation. Um, we need to provide a system that has all the features and benefits of a car uh, without any of the detriments. And we, as, as many of you who drove here this morning, I was going about five miles an hour on, on 85, which is normally a 65 mile an hour freeway. Um, so how can we build a system that's viable, that people will actually use? And I think the secret is a low cost system it doesn't require subsidies. Um, we think uh, a PRT has to be high speed. Um, and the reason is we think it has to be high speed is because people drive at 75 miles an hour for about half of their journeys. Um, and people would actually go faster if it was safe, right? You would go 80, 85 miles an hour if it was safe, but it's not safe to go fast, so we're limited. Uh, and I think PRT adoption um, is going to be very slow unless we go faster than driving, and that includes solving congestion. It, I think it has to be cheaper than driving, and it has to be attractive for, to investors. So, so that was our core design principle with Skytrain, and Doug touched that on his talk this morning. Uh, we think high speed is important. Um, if you compare a 40 mile an hour PRT system to sitting in traffic on a freeway, that's an equivalent experience. So, so that was one of our fundamental core design elements. The second one was why did we choose maglev, right? We, wheeled systems are so much simpler. Why, are, is this just a technology thing? Um, and we don't think wheels are support, uh, suited to PRT. For one thing, if you want to go fast, the faster you go, the more noise wheels generate. And we've all seen sound walls on the sides of freeways, right? Blocking the sound coming from a freeway. Um, so we think maglev is, is, is quiet, right? You can put it into cities, it doesn't disrupt neighborhoods. Um, so I think noise is one issue. Also wheels generate these high point loads, right? The, the contact patch of a tire is you know, this wide and that tall. So those, con those high loads create point loads, it creates potholes, or if it's a steel wheel on a rail, it creates clickety-clack on the track and this leads to high maintenance costs. So we all know our infrastructure in the United States is, is 50 years old and it needs a huge amount of funding to maintain all that infrastructure. So we think building a non-contact maglev system spreads out those loads, right? Instead of having a, a tire pounding on the, on the pavement, we have a, a magnetic wing that's a meter long. And suddenly, if you spread the load out over a meter, that means your infrastructure can be lighter weight and low maintenance. No contacting parts, uh, low cost, um, uh, lightweight infrastructure. And lightweight infrastructure equates to lower cost, right? The, the weight of the infrastructure is directly proportional to the cost. The other reason we did maglev, and this is a really important point, is switching, right? If you think about a train, uh, high-speed trains can't switch at high speed because it takes time to move the track uh, the, ver the lateral acceleration limits how fast you can switch. So at Skytran, we, since we're already flying on this vertical uh, magnetic wing, we thought, well, let's just switch vertically because then your switch is nothing more than a change in altitude, which is something we already do. So, we've, we, so by switching vertically, we can switch it at, at high speeds uh, without slowing down and without requiring some mechanical thing to move in the track. So that was another big breakthrough that we had. 
Um, we looked at existing maglev technology. We looked at, uh, we went and saw Richard Post at Lawrence Livermore, looked at induct track, a lot of practical problems, manufacturing problems. We looked at TransRapid, which is, you know, very expensive. Um, so we just decided to invent a new t maglev technology. Um, and, and that maglev technology is just a simple aluminum rail. Nothing in the rail, it's just a piece of aluminum, and that provides a reaction surface for levitation. It has steel supports to hold it up. It has high compliance, so if you have a pole spacing of 30 meters or 100 feet, that guideway is going to sag in the middle. So uh, a lot of existing rail or bridges, they put huge concrete reinforcement to keep that bridge flat. Um, with SkyTran, we, we, it's okay if the guideway sags because we fly, right? Even if the guideway sags a little bit, we still fly in a straight line. You know, Newton's law says object of motion stays in motion. So w w the, the experience of being in a SkyTrain vehicle will be like a plane flying through the air with no turbulence, unlike being on a road where you're constantly feeling the bumps. So that, that guideway sag means you can have a lightweight, cheap guideway. And that's a huge uh, breakthrough in terms of infrastructure. It also means um, uh, low-cost infrastructure. Um, another thing we can do is um, uh, cl tighten the spacing, right? We want to do half-second spacing on the guideway, and during switching, we'll, we'll open up the gap and, and allow one, one or one-and-a-half second spacing in the switches. Um, and that's a, a control system question. We also decided to not put power in the guideway because it it lowers the cost of the guideway, which is the single most expensive part of the system. So Skytran Maglev, it was actually based on a technology invented by the 25th Prime Minister of France. <laughs> you may not know this, uh, Francis Arago. He discovered eddy currents. Um, eddy currents are used in uh, roller coasters for brakes. Uh, when, when a roller coaster stops, it, it it has a magnetic wing in the vehicle, and there's aluminum plates on the track, and when it hits that, it, it very quickly stops the vehicle. Very safe, no contacting parts, uh, a very reliable system. So SkyTrain just takes that eddy current technology and flips it on the side. So if you think about a submarine in the water, a submarine has fins on the side. When the fins go like this, the submarine rises. When the fins go like that, the submarine falls. The SkyTran wing is just like that. It's, instead of a fin sticking in water, it's a magnetic flux line sticking into aluminum. So the flux lines are arranged like a plane. It's a long wing, that's a meter long, but it's very short this way. So that difference between the length and the width creates a fin, a magnetic fin, in the aluminum. So as you fly down this aluminum guideway here, you can fly up and down just like a submarine does in the water. And that's the core idea of SkyTran, very simple, very easy to understand. Um, and I was going to show you a video, but the, I don't have a, I'm just limited to PowerPoint today. Um, the propulsion is a similar technology, except if you take that magnetic wing and turn it into a helix and you spin it in the tube, it's just like a propeller spinning in water. So this allows us to propel the vehicle forward um, with very high uh, efficiency. We just have an aluminum tube. Inside the tube is, a, is two magnetic spools that counter-rotate. And let's see if this video works here. So this is a video of our spool running at NASA right over here in uh, NASA Ames Research Park. So we built a small subscale prototype. It has the wings to levitate. It has a switch to switch. And it has the propulsion. So we've, when, last year we demonstrated all this technology. Um, we signed a, um, we realized that a small company can't really develop PRT, it, it requires a big engineering group. So we signed a, a memor, uh, uh, what do you call it, a contract with, with uh, Israeli Aerospace to actually do our, our engineering and manufacturing. So our team now is about 25 engineers have been working for the last year to scale the small scale prototype up into a large full size test track. Um, and this is what the full size, so we've already built the first set of levitation rails. That's what you see on the left. The center is the motor tube. And that tube is about a foot in diameter. And the, the levitation rail is about half a meter tall. 
And you can see there's a flange at the top and the bottom to prevent the vehicle from flying out of the guideway. So it's trapped inside, it can't fall out. This is what the switch looks like. Um, so it's a vertical switch, and this is describing the safety system. So one, one of the uh, other design philosophies is, is um, not to rely on the software. Uh, as Vectus found out, it's very expensive to certify software for, with regulators. Um, and, and our experience with working with aerospace is they like hardware. So uh, the software is strictly an uh, efficient uh, optimization thing whereas the hardware is what actually provides the safety. And it's very easy to certify hardware because you can just uh, test how, how the hardware works. It's a very simple, much simpler certification path. So I think that's gonna help us a lot in getting these systems approved. This is what a merge looks like. So there's a break in the, t in the motor tube when you go up or, or into the merge. That's a two meter uh, distance there between the two tracks. Uh, curved guideways, we, we bank the curves. Um, here's the uh, minimum radius for different speeds. Uh, we're gonna probably start off 72 kilometers per hour on the for version one of Skytrain. And then uh, come out with a higher speed guideway later on, but that's com forward and backward compatible. Here's our picture of our test track. Uh, we started building this, we got funded in June um, and we actually started the manufacture before even the final check came through. Um, and we're hoping to fly by January. I'm actually headed to Israel tomorrow <laughs> to build the, to wire up the bogey. We're using, um, the guys who are wiring up our bogey did the wiring for uh, the F-35 fighter. So these are very experienced uh, engineers that are helping us build the system. Um, and we're, next year we're gonna, we're gonna build the, 200 meter track, full size, full weight, full speed, and then uh, build switching early next year, and by the end of next year, we hope to have a full loop running, up and running. Here's all the frames. It's about 16 tons of steel that are gonna hold up the test track. And here are the first four wings that have already been built, and, and I'm actually gonna go and attach these to the bogey uh, next week. So you can see the um, Wheels are for when the vehicle lands uh, after, after flying. So I talked about safety. Um, I'll skip over this slide. It's, it's, um, we're, we're focusing on hardware for our, our primary safety system and software will be uh, uh, for optimization. Here's a picture of what Skytran looks like inside of a building. And I apologize, I can't run the video here. Um, but this is a, a, a inside of an airport, so you could have the Skytrain coming right inside of a building, underneath the taxiway. And this is a, a picture of a very large station. We call it the trilobite, a uh, 40 berth station. So for places where lots of people are loading luggage, um, you can, the vehicles come in and loop around the outside uh, and you have parallel acceleration, deceleration ramps, so you can get high throughput. Um, and this would only be used in special situations. Um, and I talked about TES-3. Uh, we also have um, some of the airports we've been talking to are insisting on a four passenger vehicle. Uh, uh, so we've designed the guideway to be able to handle either two or four passenger vehicles. We don't think we're gonna use a four passenger vehicle in the cities. Uh, we don't plan on it, but for airports, it makes sense for terminal to terminal, uh, bringing people around in the airport. And I was happy to see uh, the first presentation with the solar panels on top. Our, our guideway is about 1.8 meters wide, so we can, we're looking forward to putting solar on top of that, that guideway. All right, that's all I had, if there's questions.